These are the reactions to what could only have been a loud gunshot at frame 285. In this video, you will see Zapruder frames beginning just prior to 285 up to frame 312, one frame prior to the fatal headshot. The sequences alternate between extreme slow motion and real time. In the slow motion sequence, look for several things. First, you can verify that each of the reactions began in the range of frames 290 to 292, which means they all began within the same one-sixth of one second. Next, look closely at Mrs. Kennedy. Notice that by frame 312, she's looking down and away from her husband. She was not examining his neck, as some people have claimed. But probably the most definitive reactions were by Roy Kellerman, sitting in the front passenger seat. Notice that as he drops his head, he simultaneously twists his head to the right and raises his left hand to his ear. He completes each of those three actions simultaneously and then straightens back up, turns his head back to a forward position, and drops his hand down from his ear, all within less than one second. In the real-time sequence, watch Bill Greer, the driver, as he spins to the front and back so rapidly that some people thought his turns were not humanly possible. I conducted tests back in 1999, which proved that his turns were not impossible, but they were close. It took me several tries before I could match Greer, and I was dizzy afterward. Greer spun around during the same instant that he lifted his foot from the gas, and the same instant that the other passengers reacted. But he was not in cahoots with the assassins. His reactions then were totally involuntary, just like the others. These reactions were similar to those following the next shot which killed the president, but they were totally unlike anything prior to that. And in fact, 285 and 312 were the only shots that were loud enough to provoke startle reactions, and therefore the only shots that could have come from high-powered rifles. I'd love to take credit for this, but Dr. Louis Alvarez, a Nobel Prize winning physicist, beat me to it by more than two decades. Although he was obviously wrong in speculating that the startling noise was a siren. The shots at 285 and 312 were only 1.5 seconds apart and much too close for Oswald to have fired them both. That fact was confirmed in tests conducted by the FBI and the House Select Committee on Assassinations. Now I've had people argue that perhaps the limo passengers were reacting to an earlier shot, say around 224. The problem with that is that experts are unanimous that startle reactions must begin within one-third of a second following the noise, and that's six Zapruder frames. But the reactions began at 290, and that's 66 frames after 224. Obviously, they were not reacting to that shot. The shot they did react to might have been a frame or two after 285, but it could not have been earlier. Any shots fired from Oswald's rifle passing within, say, 10 feet of the president would have exposed the limo passengers to sound levels of 130 or more decibels. That's 16 times louder than 90 decibels, which is the point at which experts have confirmed will cause involuntary startle reactions. Other high-powered rifles are more than twice as loud as Oswald's, so we know why the limo passengers reacted as they did to the shots at 285 and 312. And if anyone out there still doubts that those people were startled by a loud gunshot, try a simple experiment. Sit down in a chair and try to mimic Roy Kellerman's reactions then. And be sure you copy every motion and do it all within no more than one second. And while you're still in that chair, spin around completely from front to back within one-sixth of a second. And be sure to do that twice consecutively with no delay between the two turns. Oh, and uh, be sure to lift your right foot up at the same time. No, seriously, really do it. And if you do it, and if you do it in the same time span that Kellerman and Greer did, you won't ever have to wonder again if those men were startled. 